in the different continents, in the different countries, in the different time zones, in the different conditions. We hope you are taking care of yourself, your family, your neighbors, your brothers, sisters, community, society, civilization. Everybody together, ladies and gentlemen, that's what, if the world is at peace, you will be at peace. All of us, we've got to be together. So this evening, it's a proud privilege, 5 p.m., our prime time. We have got Mr. Zameer Hussain Sahab, CEO, VFX, that is supervisor, creative head, uh, bot VFX. Wow. We are going to take journey ahead today's 364th webinar. And we are going to talk about what are the career opportunities for our youth, our children, our brothers and sisters, and everybody in the VFX. So ladies and gentlemen, extend a very warm welcome to Mr. Zamir Hussain. Let me share a few of the slides with you. This evening is brought to you with a collaboration, cooperation, brotherhood, and dynamism of uh, Mr. Mohit Soni, a wonderful, handsome corporate who got into the Sector Skill Council for Media Entertainment Industry. He's doing a great job. Always, always we found him so creative, dynamic, vibrant, and his team is also wonderful. All of them, they are doing great job. And my special thanks to Pooja Aruda, who is coordinating this entire event and taking care of and packaging the entire program for all of us. Ladies and gentlemen, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, four days a week, and today is Monday. You enjoyed your Sunday. So today, let's get together, put our rucksacks and backs, and let's go for the VFX. Making education relevant is the chamber, ICSI, which extends you a very warm welcome. When we talk about non-resident Indians world over, there are 30 million plus NRIs, which are basically uh, somewhere we are doing the cooperation for each other, NRIs, corporate, and the government interface. We learn that du during difficult times and pleasant times, we all should be together, and that's what we learned from India and India's heritage, that is, Vasudev Kutumbakam. That means the whole world is one family. Heartiest congratulations to Honorable Prime Minister of India, Education Minister of India, all the stakeholders, those are in education. You have done a great job. New education policy on 29th of July. Wow. Once it gets implemented, children will learn the coding. Children will have their skills, their competencies. And they will have vocationals coming to education ecosystem right from sixth class onwards. I wish I get back to school once again. What a beautiful aura. Our chamber from morning nine till evening nine, we are live with all of you to empower the education ecosystem. And nowadays, this is a very special program what we are doing. It's a free preparation for NTSC scholarship exam. It started today, that is on 23rd, it will go to 28th. All the subjects will be covered every day, and every day we take on one subject. Today we did mathematics, tomorrow we are taking chemistry. So 12.30 to 1.30 Indian Standard Time, watch live the entire uh, presentations and preparations and everything whatsoever has to be done for your NTSC scholarship on GS Motivator YouTube channel. This is the complete canvas of the entire week, what our chamber does, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. You can see four days with the youth and teachers. Friday, we are in Singapore, that is for the youth management, uh, water management strategies. Saturday, we are in Chicago, Swami Vivekanand, 11 September, 1893. Education and youth empowerment, sisters and brothers of the universe. And then Sunday evening, we come to the micro, small, and the medium enterprise. Saturday, you have got special program on Ayurveda as well. Sunday morning, we go all the way to Hollywood, open the doors of the Universal Studio. Right in front, you have got the Woodbury University, and you have got right from there, Shrimad Bhagavad Gita in India's principal location. And then on Sunday afternoon, post-lunch, 3 p.m. Indian Standard Time, we take you to ASEAN, Southeast Asia, and every Sunday evening at, now it is shifted to 8 p.m. from 7.30, and that is non-resident Indians talking to us to empower the entire education and skills. And every day in the afternoon, Monday to Friday, 
motivational talks for the youth in hindi <coughs> excuse me ladies and gentlemen during this pandemic if we take the entire journey last 6 months the b to b what used to be business to business is now back to basics your basic food your basic health and your basic education is very important whatever human mind can conceive and believe it can achieve let's come together all of us let's make education relevant so ladies and gentlemen with these words join me and extending a very hearty warm welcome <coughs> excuse me to mr zameer hussain sahab who is with us this evening and he is going to share his entire thought process through the lens of media entertainment sector skill council let's enter to the world of vfx together let's take this journey with him zameer hussain sahab thank you very much dr gulshan for having me um, i do know that uh, there is a lot of um, a crowd and people who are uh, from the schooling till the college students so i'm going to keep my presentation a lot more simpler lot more non technical yet trying to highlight on what are the entry points into this industry than really glorifying this uh, uh, in totality so um let me begin uh, my presentation with for sure what a pleasure to have you with us what a pleasure thank you so uh give me a moment till i share my please please So, ladies and gentlemen, we are going to talk about uh, VFX this evening. By the time he shares his presentation and his views, this has been brought to you with the help of Media Entertainment Sector Skill Council, which is under the aegis of Ministry of Skill Development and Entrepreneurship. And here comes Mr. Zamir Hussain Sahab's uh, presentation, and that opens Atlanta, Los Angeles, New York, London, Chennai, Coimbatore. Let's take a wonderful journey with him. Great. Thank you. So, uh, yeah, um, uh, the studio that we work for is bought, and we have offices in all these uh, places. It's headquartered in Atlanta, but we have branches all through. Um, uh, Chennai is one of the biggest offices where we have about four uh, hundred uh, odd artists working for bought. Uh, the kind of work that we do is generally Hollywood, um, and we keep it very specific to Hollywood. uh for doing those basic services for hollywood which starts from uh two dimension three dimension until uh, the execution of the shot i will just briefly take you into what all those things exactly means uh so um first what is visual effects so visual effects is just the art and science of making uh, you believe in something that isn't actually so um for this you take the help of the computer you take the help of your creative skill try to enhance the visual in such a way that you make it look absolutely real when there is when there is uh, not really that much reality into it and many a times these uh, jargons are you know closely fitting each other and uh, they are sort of in overlap between them some people call it as vfx some call it as special effects and few say that as an animation graphic cg but actually these are not the same these are all very different uh, so cgi is computer generated imagery graphics is something that you talk when you create something in your computer animation is something where you give the movement uh, uh, in the computer special effects is something that is not computer related at all this is something that is done on the camera with pyrotechnics or some other things that is done during the shoot visual effects is just one part of uh, this entire umbrella which focuses uh, on uh, making uh, uh, making the visuals look as good as possible uh, my talk would be mainly focused and centered uh, towards visual effects so where is this visual effects uh, basically used visual effects is particularly used in areas where uh, you know shoot is not possible if you want to make somebody fall from uh, uh, a top of a building you wouldn't want to risk a life right so in those situations visual effects is, is used and it is used by various other means and it is also used in areas where it can pose a huge uh, threat to life uh, it is used in situations where there are budget constraints because uh, 
using visual effects, you can really um, get things done out of a very shoestring budget. Uh, and in terms of continuity, whenever a continuity is missing on certain sequences, visual effects is used. And there are many other um, you know, avenues where visual effects are used. Now, uh, broadly, visual effects can be uh, simplified as three major categories. One is the pre-production of visual effects. Next is the production, the actual production of visual effects, then is the post-production. So what do I mean by pre-production? Pre-production is anything that is done before the actual work is done. It is a preparatory stage. And for this, you do a lot of stuff called as uh, storyboarding. Storyboarding where you, you take the script and you convert that into drawings and sequence of drawings. And that is what you call a storyboard. You do certain concept arts. Concept arts, it's nothing but um, the visual direction for the entire VFX to really follow. For example, if a character needs to look like something, then there would be a concept art for it. Or if an environment needs to look like um, how the director has perceived, there would be a concept art. It would be shown to the director upon approval. This would become the Bible for the entire VFX pipeline to be followed. Similarly, um, there would be a lot of production designs for any asset that is created. When, when I mean asset, it could be any characters or it could be even if, if you need to make a uh, dinosaur. So there are many kind of dinosaurs that you would make very particular, uh, you know, production designs for it. Or even for that matter, if you need to make a need to make a robot and you need to make a robot in a fight sequence, you make a clear production design on how a robot looks really fresh. Then what happens after the fight? Then what happens after the fight? So what are the damages that happens? So this would be clearly charted out and there would be a design that needs to be followed um, in a sequence then there would be something called as a pre-visualization. This is really picking up a great deal now and, and um, uh, for now UK is topping up, but I think India is slowly catch up, catching up on this pre-visualization arena as well. So uh, pre-vis is nothing but uh, this is the arms and ammunition that you give to the director. So you exactly create the movie uh, on a very draft mode or a very rough mode, uh, either using a two dimensional storyboard and walking that through the sequence or you go one step further and try to do that on a 3D, you call that as an animatics. You do that on a 3D and give the director exactly look of how things will really uh, look like. And he can use this as a guide to, shot, to start the shooting for all those uh, visual effects sequences. Um, and that is called as animatics and cinematics. Uh, so let me quickly, you know, show you what those means. Like this is a good example of how a storyboard needs to look like and how that has been shot after, uh, after the storyboard is done. Storyboard is nothing but quick sequence of drawings. This would be used by everyone uh, uh, in the shoot. And uh, this would become uh, the go-to reference for any shooting that needs to happen. Um, then comes uh, the pre-visualization. So pre-visualization is can be done in two ways, as I said. It could be one by sequence of all these storyboards together, making it look like a movie, or you could uh, do that with a very quick uh, uh, 3D renderings uh, uh, by which the director has even more better idea into knowing how the sequence would really look like. Then there would be a lot of production design, which exactly tells from the two dimension how do you really make it into a three dimension what would be the color style palette or what would be the uh, color palette? What would be the kind of um, design on continuity that needs to be followed? So these are a few quick examples of what that really means. Then let's come to the next big entity, which is the actual production. Production is anything that is shot. So in production uh, uh, for VFX, there is a huge um, uh, uh, process. And this process is called as the onset supervision. So uh, for visual effect shots, the director um, takes or seeks the help of the VFX supervisor and they both discuss into exactly knowing how that particular shot needs to be um, addressed or needs to be shot. Uh, just to say a very uh, crude example, if you need, uh, uh, if you need someone really um, uh, falling against a huge building, uh, that uh, person would be shot on a separate green screen and then uh, the building uh, would be shot separately. They both would be combined or they both would be composited together to make it look real as though someone is falling on the top, from the top of the building. 
So uh, that's something that uh, would happen during the shoots. Uh, for the shoots, it would be mainly led by a person called as a VFX supervisor. And he'll have a lot of uh, other assistants for him who would really help him with a lot of capturing of the data. There are many data that is captured during the shoot, which will really facilitate uh, the VFX pipeline uh, from there on. Uh, to start with, uh, a good uh, example is uh, taking in the track data or taking in the LiDAR data. So uh, LiDAR data is nothing but um, uh, a data which exactly tells how that uh, particular environment looks like in terms of the coordinates, in terms of how it looks uh, uh, for the scale, for, uh, for the size, for the basic morphology of it. So this would be captured separately. And also uh, you exactly need to know where the lights are placed in the set so that if you need to place a computer generated object right next to it, you should use the same sort of information to that computer generated object so that the real and the computer generated, generated object looks close. And for that you use Chrome ball to capture uh, the areas where uh, the lights are. Uh, and you also capture many other informations like uh, how the shadows are there. If, it, if, if the shadows are very contrasty or if it's a very um, you know, diffuse shadows, you capture all those information. Not only that, uh, in production, um, off late, there are also a lot of um, technical advancements where uh, uh, a light stage is set. So uh, if, if that needs to be a, a CG person that needs to be generated, you take a lot of information from the live person. You make the live person sit uh, in front of uh, a light stage, like uh, the image that I'm showing now is a light stage. So this is where a person would sit in the middle and there would be a lot of variations of lights that is really bounced on him so that you exactly capture all the required information uh, from his face. And that information would be very much essential for the computer to use it and to make it look as hyper realistic as possible. Uh, and this is uh, the one that you see on the left is a good example of um, how a blue screen uh, is shot and what is a comparative uh, output of that. And the Chrome ball that I've been saying uh, is this one. The one that you see on the right is the Chrome ball. The one that you see in the below is the LiDAR information that gets captured for every uh, every scene. And not only that, uh, often there, there is a lot of use of performance capture. So the earlier it was all keyframe, the animation was keyframe for every muzzle in the face. Even now it, it does happen. But um, I think there is a luxury of doing a facial capture so that uh, we don't need to really hand animate every single movement of the muzzle in the face but it gets captured uh, by this uh, uh, technology of a face capture. And this would be uh, generated again as certain uh, vertex points and they would be fed to the model that you're really creating. So whatever the real um, human has been uh, you know, performing, the same performance can be attributed to the, to the asset that you have really created. Uh, then comes uh, the meaty part, which is the post-production. Um, see, the actual VFX happens in the post-production. In post-production, there is a lot of stages at which you work. So there would be an editorial stage. There would be a stage where you do some basic uh, essentials like the rotoscoping, painting, and prepping of certain plates, matte painting. And you would also need to you know, uh, track the information that is there on the shot and make it uh, usable uh, by the animators and by the uh, other 3D team so that they can use this track information and place the character where it needs to be there on the 3D space. And um, if for all those destruction, for all those uh, huge oceans and simulations, you have effects, which is again computer generated. There would be also a lot of hair and muzzle system that needs to be done uh, by the creature dev, which, is also, which also comes under the effects. And also there, um, you know, off late, there is a need for a lot of crowd systems. Like uh, uh, you need to create the crowd for the entire stadium, or you need to create a crowd for a huge uh, scene where there are uh, millions of people. And for that, again, uh, a particle system and a crowd system is used. 
and finally you do something called as a compositing then you carry on with the color grading and di before you present this back to the director so this is basically um, a simplified version of what a post production in visual effects is uh um, so this a uh, few quick examples of what is a rotoscopy the one that you see with the boy raising his hands exactly tells you what the rotoscopy is rotoscopy is nothing but tracing out the edges of any specific area region or an object and cutting it out taking it and placing it on the other one it's more like a collage so but it is done on a digital uh, uh, platform by using a lot of softwares Uh, the one that you see behind below is uh, the basic essentials that you need to do for prepping up the plate in the shot that you see there you could see some camera crew there and that needs to be cleaned up before the shot gets executed on the right uh, you see what a match move is match move is nothing but taking the same scene and making that scene into digital coordinates so that this can be used on a on a digital three dimensional scale to exactly know how tall that building is or how big the tree is or how far uh, one object is from the other object uh, which a computer can can understand that you need to take it from the real world and convert it into the language that the software understands then there is something called as a rotomation where uh, uh, for certain extreme scenarios where uh, where there is a hand or if there is a character one part of the character needs to be replaced and for those situations you exactly uh, you know uh, 3d model and uh, rotomate that particular object in such a way that uh, it closely matches to what you see on the image and if you do any tweaking on those images you could always render that in comp it over uh, the actual uh, shot Uh, okay these are few examples of uh, what a model is what a rigging is the one that you see below is the effects that is created the one that you see on the right is uh, the muzzle system that would be generated um by the computer because these muzzles are very important in olden days you would have seen that if a character needs to animate uh, it would just be uh, it would just be a very fake uh, animation of uh, two legs or if it's a quadruped for uh, the four uh, legs but uh, uh, that is that was not real in those days but now with these technology that's really coming up you you rebuild exactly how the muzzle system needs to exist in that particular uh, uh, creature or a character so that when something really works you also feel the jiggle and you also feel how the muzzle interacts um, within it and that makes uh, the animation look as real as possible um then uh, are situations of lighting where you take uh, the normal mesh you light it in a specific uh, uh, direction that is given by the director and finally you do something called as a compositing where you you assemble all that you bake separately in all these departments together and present it as one single shot right let me move on from what vfx is uh, uh, as a briefing into what are the possibilities of a vfx career and where do you really need to start and what are the entry points where you can get in easily which is more relevant to our talk now so there are various departments in visual effects that contribute to to working in synchronization um, into executing a shot as i briefly told you there is something called as a pre visualization and there is the 2d uh, the 2d department the 3d department there is a separate uh, entity called as a layout then you have the stereo department then you have a other entities supporting entities like uh, the pipeline development the editorial the color grading production on set supervision and uh, systems and networking so there is a lot of um, uh departments and people working together in sync uh, for us to execute our visual effects and um, to start with going into these departments in detail i am only focusing on the entry level uh, uh, jobs that you can really get on a previous department um, the entry level jobs that can really happen is the job of a concept artist concept artist is someone who exactly understands what the director wants and uh, taking in uh, the script and giving it the form of a visual and giving it back to the director to figure out whether has he really conceived the same way as what the director had uh, perceived 
so a concept artist is very crucial to visual effects and his skills would be more um, uh, slanted towards a two dimensional uh, starting with photoshop for that matter then comes the storyboard so storyboard artist would be a hardcore um, uh, art based guy who can really uh, draw a lot of sequences together uh, and give a good direction for everyone to know what is uh, what is the shot length what would be the kind of pan that is required what would be the kind of zoom that is required what would be the kind of framing that is really required for uh, a given shot then comes uh, the previous artists who concentrate on the cinematics and animatics as we just saw so these three would be primarily the entry level jobs on uh, the previous department then comes to uh, the 2d department in 2d department the entry level jobs would be like the rotoscope artist as i told you the person who or the artist who tries to um, cut through any specific region and then place it in another area for example you need to you need to you need to cut out a character from one plate and you need to add it on to the another plate it's as simple as doing a simple paper cut and pasting it on the other uh, uh, paper to make it look like they both are seamless um then comes the paint and uh, prep side of things where uh, not only cleaning up all those non essential stuffs in the plate they also do a lot of um, um cleaning up of uh, the wires in the shot or uh, fixing the beauty of it for example if if the if the hero has a pimple on his face and they'll have to remove the pimple or for example over the course of shoot if if there is any artifacts that comes up in the plate or if there is any uh, variations that has come in the makeup that is um, uh, that is placed on uh, every character those makeup would be painted in such a way that they don't look too gaudy and they look more presentable then comes uh, the matte painters this is a very crucial uh, uh, part of the 2d system matte painters are someone who really create the environment for you so matte painting and environment artists are sort of you know go hand in hand so uh, they either uh, use two dimensional way to create an environment or they also uh, use two dimensional uh, images and project it on the three dimensional uh, surfaces to make it look like an environment and then comes the compositors who form the elite group of all those uh, uh, 3d uh, department and who are supposed to be the finishers of every shot uh, then comes the layout department in layout department the entry level hits that uh, one can really look for is the match move artist rotomation artist and layout artist so whenever i say these departments this also needs to have some relevance to what software that you need to really learn uh, i do understand that uh, the perception of what visual effects is not really very much clear with uh, with many parents for that matter and also with many kids and uh, sometimes uh, they get derailed uh, when they are thrown too much information at them um it's as good as you going to college and learning something you don't just go to a college and learn anything that you need you are very specific where you need to know exactly do you need to step into an arts college or a science college or a humanities or an engineering college and further go and pick up what exactly science that you need do you need uh, you know life sciences or do you need uh, you know physics or chemistry or what not and within that you also figure out whether do you need to do an undergraduation or post graduation similarly uh, in visual effects there is a lot of uh, visual effects is a big umbrella and there are a lot of nuances and niche that one can really specialize on uh, and become the expert in those niche specialization the more that you are an expert in the in a very particular part of visual effects the more valued you are i think it's pretty much same as whatever it is even if somebody is a is a very good shoe maker and if nobody can stitch shoes like him then he would always be valuable or if somebody is a very good electrician if he can light up the house in such a way that uh, nobody could do then he is more valuable similarly is uh, in vfx also so the task that you do if you are able to do in in a way that uh, you are able to do the best possible way you are always value uh so keeping the gyan aside i'm just moving to the other departments which is uh, the 3d department this is a bigger department which has got a lot of people into it 
Um, so you will have somebody called as a modelers, riggers. So modelers are someone who really um, create an object in into the computer or into the software, I should say. Uh, let's take a crude example of a, of, of any uh, say of a of a dragon. If someone wants to create a dragon and uh, he exactly needs to know how a dragon should look like, and that would be given to him by the concept artist. He will use that as a reference and modeler would start building that dragon into the software in the computer. And those people are called as modelers. And there are many softwares that is used to, to, to really create a model. The softwares could be like uh, the 3D Studio Max or Maya, Houdini or you know ZBrush, Mudbox. There are quite a lot of softwares. Then comes a person called as rigger. Rigger is a person who exactly rigs or who gives the structure of the bones or uh, who gives the, uh, the framework for that model. You create a dragon, but then how do you make the dragon move? You will have to create a bone, like how the bone is there within a human system. So the rigger tries to create a bone or create a framework or a skeleton within that to exactly say uh, that this is, a, this is a skeleton. And if you're going to move the leg, the dragon is going to move. Or if you're going to move the hand, the dragon's hand is going to move. For that, there is a lot of uh, you know nuances that a rigger would do. Uh, the rigger exactly will know uh, what is the kind of rotation that he needs to do. Or for example, take this example of a hand. When you need to create a, uh, another human uh, duplicate. So if that is a model, a rigger should exactly create the same sort of a a skeletal system that exists uh, in our uh, real world. So he'll give uh, he'll give the bones. He'll give he'll give the joints so that these become crucial. So for for this joint, you can see that my my elbow joint does not move 360 degree. You can see my elbow joints movement is not more than okay 90 100 probably 100 degree is what my elbow joint can move. What happens if my elbow joint moves 360 degree? Then it, this would go on the reverse side. So a rigger is a person who exactly says um, the minimum value, maximum value, and he gives a framework. It's a bit more technical uh, part of the 3D. Then comes the texturing artist or the shading and texturing artist. So these people actually give the skin to what the modeler has done. So modeler would do everything on just the meshes or the gray scale, and the texturing artist would take it and uh, you know uh, create. Uh, create the skin in such a way that that looks absolutely real. Shading artists are, are the people who exactly tell how the, how the mesh or how the uh, 3D object needs to respond to a lighting. See, uh, for the computer, having a ball is the same. How does the computer know it's a rubber ball or a steel ball or a plastic ball? The shading and texturing artist would really give those properties to that. Uh, even if they make three uh, balls, they'll exactly say, okay, the first ball is the plastic ball, second one is uh, the metal ball, and the third one is uh, you know, uh, a rubber ball. So that computer understands that this, that is it. And then comes the FX artist. FX artists are really you know, a very jolly people who really likes to you know, uh, demolish everything. They are very good at uh, you know, uh, blasting the buildings, uh, creating a lot of destruction and uh, uh, making a lot of simulations, simulations for the hair, simulations for the cloth, simulations for uh, the liquid systems, the particle systems, the fluid systems. Yeah, those are effects artists. Then comes the creature dev artists. Yeah, creature dev artists are people who, who add on the other relevant stuff to that character, like the hair. Like if somebody is really moving and uh, the hair has to exactly fall in line so that it looks very real or the cloth. So um, a modeler would only model the, uh, the object, but a cloth is modeled by the creature dev artist or the, uh, creating the muzzle system, as I showed you as a quick example. Then comes the animators. Animators use all the, um, all the uh, controls that is given by the riggers and use that control to animate an object, animate an object or an animated character. These animators have to be very, very creative and they have to be a people who really observe very well. Uh, they, they exactly need, need to know the nuances and being very specific about how certain animations happen. 
take for example um, uh, how does a baby walk or how does uh, a teenager walk or how does a, a old person who is about 60 walks they all have two legs but do they walk on the same style no they don't so animator exactly needs to know what kind of uh, you know uh, animation cycle that he is going to do so that it looks like a baby or it looks like uh, the teenager or the old person so they have to be very good with observing things and trying to replicate those things onto their uh, softwares to get a very good animation then comes the lighters so lighters would take the model would take all that is there uh, before them they will place that into the software into the uh, 3d software and recreate the light they would add on the light from the software and light the scene up uh, this is a very interesting and um, very time intensive uh, task uh, so they have to exactly make things look as real as possible to the real world then comes the render render wranglers and these are again technical people who facilitate all the works that you do and to make an image out of those stuff so all the all these people have worked but all their work have to be transferred as a as a image or they have to be rendered as a as a file and these people uh, facilitate in rendering all those uh, data into a file so that you see that as a image either they would render it as a Uh, whatever file format that is there in the pipeline then comes the support uh, crew the support uh, crew are uh, the production people production people are somebody who are like uh, people with a whip who try who try to chase all the creative artists into finishing things on time so they are very crucial into budgeting they budget how much time would it really need to execute for that particular task and they ensure that that task is completed within uh, the particular time that is committed for the client so time is money so when i say time it refers to the uh, creative part but they would be the people who exactly you know for this kind of a task so much money needs to be bid to the to the director or to the producer and uh, how things go on between uh, the client and uh, the creative team that you have on the studio and there are many uh, designation to it like the production coordinator production assistants and line producers to start with then comes another huge supporting uh, entity which is um, the pipeline uh, development td so they call it as pipeline td so pipeline is very important because they are the people who really connect all the people that have been talking now all the artists have been talking now they connect the um, modelers to the riggers and riggers to the animators and animators to the lighters and lighters to the compositors so they are the people who exactly um, uh, keep keep the lifeline of the entire vfx studio going on so they exactly know how to make bridges between two entities and they know exactly how to how to create the technical link between two different departments so that they both uh, work seamlessly uh, then comes the developers yes for anything to happen uh, into with the computer you need people who develop it so the major software can always be purchased that is available uh, uh, with a lot of uh, uh, vendors but then uh, as a studio or as you are working with visual effects you also need to create a small small plugins so that uh, that would be a little bit iterative version of what the defaults are and for this you need a huge uh, developer team who can really create a lot of uh, you know automations into your uh, working for example if had you not had developers and pipeline tds you would do everything in a linear fashion but developers pipeline tds and programmers will really help you automate a lot of tasks and they will be the people who make uh, things happen a lot more faster and easier and make uh, the lives of all the creative people a lot more easy then comes uh, the systems administrators who who again are the lifeline into providing all the gears that you might be using whether it's your laptop or uh, your workstations or any other uh, uh, required uh, machinery that you would be using then comes the support systems uh, and io team uh, see this io team are the people who who are the link between uh, you and the client in terms of the data so they will be the people who would be getting the data from the client interpreting the data in the way that you understand and passing to the creative team 
so they would be they would be more like the courier team for that matter so they would be the couriers then comes the r and d and the product team where um, uh, for example uh, the next show or the next movie uh, the dir- the director might say that um, i'm going to have a lot of uh, uh, water splashes or i'm going to have a lot of waterfall or i'm going to have a lot of um, uh, you know trees or vegetation in my movie so this r and d team will start uh, you know working around to figure out what would be the best way to do that they'll create few samples to show to the director if that is what he is really looking after and start directing the developers and programmers into building that as a software so that the creative team can use that and work uh then comes the uh, the last uh, uh, bunch of people who are the editorial and on site uh, supervision team so editorials are uh, people who would be extracting the information that is short they would do the uh, cuts and trimming and they will exactly create what is required and they'll they'll pass that on to the creative team so you call them as the vfx editors not only that after the work is over they they will stitch um, the entire sequence and they'll stitch the shot in the middle together so that uh, when when the director looks through the sequences he'll know exactly okay these were live and this was cg and uh, he'll exactly know what he needs to look at and he will comment it on uh, any iteration that is required to the vfx editor and vfx editor would again pass it back to the creative team then you you have the colorist so who are the finalists or who who are the people who are um, uh, taking the entire movie coloring that in a way that uh, the director really wants and then taking the visual effect shots and matching the color of that visual effect shots to the actual color and uh, making they both look seamless they are the people who give the color tone to the movie and they are they are the people who work with uh, a lot of data a lot of uh, high resolution images then you have a lot of uh, people who assist in uh, the supervision like the data collectors for the light like as i showed you earlier um the light trick people or uh, light stage people uh, the tracking people who can you know extract all the tracking information and give it off to the creative team but off late there is also a new trend that is happening of these virtual productions where uh, earlier a uh, uh, vfx supervisor goes shoots a shot brings it to the creative team but now the creative team go to the uh, place of the shoot and they do everything that i told you that is done as a post they are doing it on a production now off late with this uh, covid situation i think virtual production is taking a lot more mileage and people have started to slant more into doing a lot of vir- virtual production so that they minimize the cost and they keep uh, things that uh, readily iteratable at the given shooting spot itself than shooting it out and uh, doing the work at a much later stage okay uh, i would like to summarize my uh, talk into the quick do's and don'ts of what you need to look at for a vfx career uh, if you think that you have a creative bent of mind and you think that you have a very good observational skills yes then i think uh, you should choose visual effects because for visual effects you absolutely need to be creative and you need to have a very good observation skill the next important one is that to get into visual effects you will have to prove your excellence in any particular domain that i showed you or i talked about it so unless you are one studying that domain or specializing that domain uh, it would really be difficult to get into that domain easily then comes uh, your mindset of having the creative and technical skills um, i have not seen people who are absolutely creative to be successful in visual effects or neither i have seen people who are very technical to be successful in visual effects so you need to have a balance you need to be a, a man with both the worlds you need to be creative yet make that creative skills into the technical uh, skills so that you are able to articulate what you are thinking and presenting so you need to be a person who is very good at creative and technical skill to make your career successful in visual effects then uh, for visual effects and to get an entry into visual effects display of talent is more important than the degrees because degrees um, don't matter so much as much as what you need to show up your talents for even if you do a post graduation or a graduation in um, 
in visual effects you will have to do a show reel or a demo reel which demonstrates your ability so that you become more saleable or you become more uh, uh, fit to enter into the industry so displaying of a talent is more crucial than your degrees then as a person you should be able to adapt yourself very quickly with the trends that are happening visual effects has not been the same it always has a huge ups and downs and there is also a very frequent updation that happens so unless you are adaptive to change and you are uh, you are uh, very much updated with the kind of tool sets that uh, is required you'll really struggle in a visual effects so it's more like a doctor for a doctor he can't uh, survive just by writing paracetamol to everyone right he needs to know what are the new medicines he needs to know what are the new combinations he needs to be updated with the new uh, uh, new formulas that is there that he can apply that to his patients similarly uh, for visual effects one needs to be updated with the softwares with the tool sets that you need to do for making your same creative task a lot more faster so tool sets just help you make things a little faster than what you would be doing on a on a normal way then i would recommend uh, if you were to pursue this career i would recommend you picking up a bachelor of fine arts a bfa as they call um, as your uh, undergraduate degree and probably a masters in film school should really help you build a stronger base and then choose a very specific domain so that you can specialize on it and um, last but not the least if you want more information i would strongly recommend that you uh, take up these two books which is uh, one is uh, by ed catmel uh, the person whom i really admire um, he talks about what creativity is in this book and he talks about how pixar was uh, established and uh, how to toy story was done then comes a very uh, important handbook for everyone in visual effects which is the vs handbook of visual effects uh so ves is nothing but visual effects society so they have a handbook that talks about all the terminologies i spoke about uh the specializations and uh, what are those and that will give you a brief understanding of what visual effects is before you you finalize on a thought on what uh specialization of visual effects you should really you know pursue so i let me just uh, you know end my talk there and i am open to questions question and answers wonderful wonderful thank you very much so <coughs> please up thank you very much wonderful you. you try to make it as simple as possible so that everybody can uh, you know everybody can assimilate it it comes to their level and they can understand it much better both the books uh, which you have given uh creativity and the other one v e s okay yeah. yes handbook to be yes 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 <laughs> okay <laughs> that's lovely that's lovely now i just uh, wish to understand at this point of time what is the status uh, of vfx in india and how do you see the future road map which is uh, coming through for the younger generation that's a very good question uh, doctor um, vfx has um, um, has taken its own sweet time than what we perceived so uh, uh, we expected vfx to really bloom uh, or boom a lot more faster than what it is but i think now at this point of time it is at the right stage india has become the capital of all those basic services now uh, for the hollywood any movie name a movie in hollywood it is done in india for all those basic services to start with when i say basic services i mean uh, uh, the roto prep match move rotomation assets building up certain models so we are basically uh, making all those ingredients but these ingredients are mixed in hollywood but making of those ingredients are we so and we are at the right stage but i would uh, uh, or i i foresee that we are still expanding so that from basic services we are slowly getting into the finishes okay. so now with all these uh, you know uh, new and bigger budget movies that is coming up we are not only assisting the hollywood but we are again making a parallel hollywood here okay so is it uh, on account of because the human resource is economical 
or is it human resources more creative over here or is it uh, because the it related services are more over here what exactly is the reason uh that's a very good question dr gulshan it's, it's a mix of all three basically so, yeah uh, so since we were good at it developing an infrastructure to do this has become easy for us okay and um, uh, the labor force and uh, the workforce is a lot more economical here compared to the western world that is a crucial okay. aspect um creativity yes creativity is in our genes with all these mythologies and the kind of characters that we evolve with we tend to be the most creative people but the creativity is still not capitalized as what it should so we have capitalized on our infrastructure um, uh, with these um, uh, it related stuff we have capitalized on our uh, resource and economical resource and the wider talent base we have but now we'll have to capitalize more on the creative aspects of it where we start the work and we finish the work than just assisting it okay we have to focus more on creative part on the creative part yes okay okay and uh, you are sitting in tollywood and i am sitting in pollywood <laughs> so i just wish to understand that uh, every youngster in pollywood uh, wants to be a dharmendra but everybody over there at your place they want to be more creative towards bahubali and they are more interested uh, like uh, our uh, that great actor you know so rajinikanth and others so what i'm talking about they they sometimes don't understand how much hard work goes in making that uh, small package and that piece which you enjoy for 1 hour 20 minutes 25 minutes 30 minutes 40 minutes you know 1 hour 40 minutes that's so, a well said statement uh, <laughs> because uh, even with our college uh, we have a lot of um, inroads into colleges so uh, we um, we bring in a lot of students to our uh, facility we give them one week of uh, a quick exposure into what visual effects is trust one me one week yeah uh, to start with we call this as a screening uh, uh, stuff so in one week uh, uh, half the people move out they okay. have the perception that everything is very glossy and very easy to do they stay for one week and they find it to be really intensive work than what they really perceived it's i'm just echoing uh, the same lines of what you're saying it okay. is not as simple as it really sounds so you need okay. to be an exceptional person to be surviving in this okay as in they men i'm just asking this question as a curiosity as a as a child at the age of 72 i just wish to know from you that uh, this one week packaging which you have got for the youth the program is it more technical is it more creative is it more labor intensive or what exactly is is okay. the prerequisite for the children <laughs> no <laughs> the pre yeah the prerequisite is uh, a bit of awareness on uh, on the visual effects so okay. yeah um this is more like the internship program that uh, we have with a lot of uh, colleges down south here uh, okay. basically uh, we enrolled into the animation colleges that are here we enrolled into the arts fine arts colleges and wow. also what we do is uh, at least bot has a very special uh, 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 relation with uh, the specially challenged uh, colleges that you see here okay um, 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 if i say the speech challenge <coughs> challenge mm -hmm. uh, you know colleges we go there and uh, we bring in the people because they need to exactly know what we do here and trust me those people really take things um, in a in a much more faster way and they tend to be one of uh, the artists who shine very well and we have our out of our uh, 400 people in our studio we have close to 8 to 9% of uh, the specially challenged people oh you have given me a very very innovative noble thought uh, yeah we we tend to maintain this ratio at 10% as much as possible uh, because uh, yeah why i'm thinking is because there's a lady at gurugram near delhi and she is doing a lot of work at this point of time on specially able children because nice. generally i have found that you get uh, more towards this side when 
somebody in the family is having a difficulty or a problem then then you develop those emotions more deeper that is so uh, in case uh, if you want to invite them some some time uh, let's take it there's a complete forum there's a association of women those are working for specially able children so 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 would you like some time to be kind enough if you have got something uh, you know whatever you are doing a noble cause for specially able children can i fix uh, a 20 25 minutes interaction on the zoom and i get those ladies from gurgaon gurugram and we can work out and i think it may get a new dimension because they are at presently working with the ministry of women and child development and ministry of uh, social, social welfare women and child development yes yes uh we would be very much glad to connect uh, with those people oh. uh, gulshan ji and not only Great. that uh, we can have the people who are working with us with with such uh, 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 with such skills to really facilitate them if it is going to be hearing challenged uh, you know uh, children then we can have the artists who are working with us communicate in the language that they know we we would be glad to do this gulshan ji sir we will package it within next one week we will package it within next one week i'll put you across it's a complete forum of uh, indian women there is some association Okay. which is working for specially they approached me some time back mm. and uh, you have given me something because this is creative part interesting stimulating and children will enjoy enjoy they will enjoy we, we also have a close connection with um, uh, uh, such schools uh, abroad as well like the exceptional minds oh okay so um, god bless you god bless you i think uh, that is uh, that is a wonderful take which i have taken and finally coming on a different node uh, because i am little hungry so i want to get more from you uh, what could be done in northern india with your organization of course uh, pooja arora ma'am from the sector skill council is doing a lot mm -hmm. but what could be done what what our chamber can do for you and when we can bring your expertise to another part of india yeah um we had planned uh, um i think last december it was we had planned like um, uh 11 cities 11 days uh, for, for north india so this is more oh. like uh, uh taking the help of those animation colleges and uh, animation schools um, like the aptex and uh, the other animation colleges where they can help us facilitate and we can have a live uh, uh, you know chat session where they can ask the questions to our specialist and they can get some ideas so we have this live uh, uh, skype chat session i think it was uh, uh, two hours uh, for every day so that uh, it's more for the students we can assemble those students in one part and it would be more uh, helpful if you can facilitate that and we'll be able to share the knowledge uh, through that uh, question ji you are showering you are showering lot of warmth this evening to me because there is another idea which has come to me because you mentioned that 11 cities 11 days program you have already done yes so what comes to my mind the honorable prime minister always talks about asht lakshmi that eight states of northeast part of india i come from the armed forces background and i was major in the army so i recall all those days and i'm deeply connected with the northeast for last about 40 years plus because before i moved to the ministry of tourism government of india from the indian army so i recollect if we can do because in northeast children are very fond of uh, media entertainment music and creativity and dances and everything whatsoever should we work out uh, that gives me a dimension because you have already done 11 cities and 11 days i i may come to north india later should we package something with you for northeast part of india there are eight states and if you can do a virtual or a visual or a skype or whatever program you feel appropriate let us think about it and maybe with you we can take one or more slots like yours is a vfx we can take music we can take something else and three of you together and we package for entire northeast that that will be wonderful gulshan ji i think uh, 
let's let's start uh, putting in the seeds for this uh, i would be glad to be a part of it god bless you god bless you we will uh, we will write to you soon and we get across to each other thanks for sparing your most valuable time this evening thanks for sharing your knowledge your wisdom and your expertise with us we wish all the best take care of your health take care of everybody in your region your area and let's take the vfx along with other segments of the media entertainment sector skill council i am taking the first slot that is northeast park eight states eight cities and also the women association specially challenged children these two projects i will work on that immediately thank you